Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. In this episode, we're at the Malama Honua celebration in Honolulu, welcoming home the Hokulea. For three years, the historic Polynesian voyaging canoe Hokulea sailed around the world without maps or compasses, using ancient wayfinding techniques to guide her. During the voyage, over 200 volunteer crew members helped to sail the canoe. Known as Malama Honua, to care for our island earth, the worldwide voyage visited over 150 ports, celebrating indigenous cultures and traditional knowledge, while inspiring people to better manage their resources and confront global challenges. The Hokulea was joined by voyaging canoes from throughout Polynesia and Micronesia as she sailed into Magic Island. The crew was greeted by a huge celebration with over 50,000 people from around the world and traditional arrival ceremonies not witnessed for hundreds of years. Following the homecoming celebration at Magic Island, the community joined the Polynesian Voyaging Society and celebrity guest speakers from around the world in a three-day Malama Honua Summit at the Hawaii Convention Center to learn, share, and explore the next step in the worldwide voyage. Sam Kapoi has been a crew member and media specialist for the Hokulea since 2002. Sam is also a member of Halemua o Maui a Akalana, a men's group from Waianae that carries on traditional Hawaiian practices. Sam and the Halemua performed the Kali'i Rite Ceremony as a first step of welcoming the Hokulea crew back to shore. Today, my role was to be the the champion or the representation of, of all the canoes and, and for our island. And basically the, the Kali'i ceremony, the rite of passage ceremony, uh, I was the one who caught the spears, uh, eight spears that, that came at me, one representing for each canoe. we haven't seen in hundreds of years. Yeah, the Kali is, is, has always been alive. Um, one of our, our teachers, Kayo Nakanelua from Maui, he has his, his Kali uh, group that he trains kids up to adults and they've been practicing this, this art for you know years. The last time that someone did it with eight spears though, uh, is kind of significant, the Ihe Makavalu was done by you know the great one, King Kamehameha. <laughs> We say ho'omana, like all, all, everything that we do is to, to either uh, give or elevate our mana as a people, yeah? And so if we can do stuff like this, uh, it's just raising the bar for the next generation to be better than us. The Kali ceremony is done as a rite of passage. When a canoe goes on on a voyage, that crew or canoe is is in the hands of Kanaloa and, and or the hands of God, you know, however you want to look at it. 
But when they come back to this life, to this land, there's a little bit more control than out there, right? So with the rite of passage, with the Kali, it's, it's something to signify that, that you are human, yeah? you are a man, that you bleed. And so with, with the spears coming at you, uh, you know, the goal is to catch it. Uh, and at the same time, if you don't, then it's going to prove if you're a god or a man, right? And then, and then after the spears, then there's uh, another part of the ceremony that is done. The guys come up with their with their pahoas or their nevas, and they come up and touch you with the point of the their their tips of their weapons to 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 have that representation of you getting pierced. And so that is now everything is is all good. Then another another guy comes in and, and presents a, a certain type of, of maia or banana, uh, iholena or uh, popoulu. Today we use the iholena, and that was in in the old days during the kapu time, was was noah for all the the men and women. We could share that certain maia because most maia wasn't you know wasn't it was only the men, and so that maia is is given as a present for for everything to be all all noah not all I guess. Uh, I don't even know the English word for Noah, but everything is all good, basically. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that you would like to share or a feeling that you want to pass on? If you're watching this, I would want someone to to ho'omana. If, if there is something in your culture that needs to be brought back, uh, then do it. You know what I mean? That's, that's just what it is. That's how Hokulea started. You know, all these people, all these naysayers, was talking all this nonsense about us floating here and not knowing what we're doing, drifting here. And you know, our, our ancestors proved them wrong multiple times, you know, and, and for years, this is like almost almost 50 years, you know, that Hokula has been around. And and we've did the, the Tahiti round, we did the Samoa, the Aotearoa, the Rapa Nui, and then the world, you know what I mean? It's like, what now, you know, like, what, what, what kind of things are you not trying to prove, you know? But, um, and, and this voyage wasn't even about that. It was more about reconnecting with the world's people to see how we can take care of our Earth, because there's only one. And so, um, yeah, if you can, whatever you can gain from this, I, I hope that's what you can do is perpetuate something from your culture that would home on a, yourself and your, your, your people. University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii Sea Grant. Welcome back. We're talking story with John Cruz, original Hokulea builder and crew member on its maiden voyage to Tahiti in 1976. John also co-founded Nakala'i Va'a'o Kauai, which launched Kauai's voyaging canoe, the Namahoi, in fall of 2016, after 20 years of construction. What is the message from this whole Malama Honua? When Naino spoke and all these guys heard, you know, you, the agenda is about the canoe, is about the getting more of these young people. Because they're, they're really, they are the next step. And like Naino said, if, you know, if the fire goes out, you know, we're, we're the fire, you know. When we pass, we gotta find somebody that's uh, going to keep going. So now that's why we built the canoe. We're trying to use it as a, floating classroom um, and so we can have in the charter schools and in the education system and the public schools the land canoe which is the students on land can talk to the ocean the canoe the, the classroom and then you know go around the island because really it's the island's canoe and so we want to take it to all these communities to thank them for supporting us. So 20 years, it took us to build this thing. You know, we only know everything from statehood in, the, in 1959 to the present. 
these guys are teaching them from 59 back. You know, you, so the whole thing about history and you read all the history books, the thing is all, like Nino said, the thing's wrong. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go past the, the overthrow, past all that. And that's where all this uh, ime ike, all this knowledge is kept. The mission is, you're not done yet. The, the mission is get these young guys who, local kids, they gotta, they can read all in books, but they gotta touch it. They gotta feel that thing. And something stirs inside kids that, you know, you go, oh, I wonder how I can do that. So if you talk to maybe 100 kids in, in a classroom, one or two get it. They go to school, they learn about engineering and about ocean. Hey, you, you kind of getting, the, the, the mood is changing, yeah, what I mean to say. Hokulea is a good part of your life? I said, yeah, it's a good part of my life, but I think the joy is, is when we went on the Hokulea for the first time and we saw Tahiti. And Eddie was supposed to be on that voyage, but he saw the hakaka or the difficulty or the stress. He backed away. He said, no, no, this is, this is, uh, I'll wait. So in 1978, okay, we can go again. And I know then we flipped over and the whole rest was history. Um, yeah, it was stormy. Next, we catch up with Kaiulani Murthy, Hokulea navigator from Hawaii Island. We first talked with Kaiulani in October of 2013 when Hokulea was preparing for the worldwide voyage. Now that Hokulea is home, Kaiulani's excitement about the journey's purpose is as powerful as ever. It's really exciting that Hokulea is home again. You know, it's been a long time that she's been away from home, so it's awesome, nice to be, be back home. And like, I know it was, saying as we're coming in, you know, we're now we're bringing Hokulea back home to Hawaii's children. And it's awesome to see how many people came out to, to welcome the canoes back too. I feel really privileged to have been able to do the, the legs of the voyage that I did. Um, three of them in the Pacific. Also getting to check out the East Coast of America for a few weeks too. So that was that was a different kind of voyage. It's a real coastal kind of stuff, but connecting with the with the native peoples of that place, that was, you know, that was also an incredible experience. The first leg I did was to going to Tahiti, and then after that I went from Samoa to Tonga to Aotearoa, and then even this last trip coming home from Tahiti. We get to see those southern stars that we don't see home here. So a lot of those stars that are, you know, closer to the south celestial pole, that um, they're bright stars, but we never see them here, so it's just getting used to um, being able to use those for this, you know, same way we would use stars here in the in the northern hemisphere. I think, you know, when I know folks are learning, and you know, it's just like, you know, such a small amount of them that we're learning and trying to um, get that the same way that Papa Mao navigated. You know, he could do it by himself, just barely any sleep. Um, I feel like now there's so many of us students that are learning that it makes sense that we, you know, support each other by having these teams and. You know, having one, you know, a, a main kind of a lead person, um, but with the support that you feel like you can really um, rest and not worry that you're going to, you know, be off course or whatnot. So every voyage that we get to do, even with Cole, like we had Bruce Blankenfeld on board, just accelerates the learning from, you know, what they've, um, what they've been able to teach us and then spending the time on the water with them. Um, that's really, that's really important while they're still, while they're still sailing. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years. Through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Welcome back. We're celebrating the Hokulea's return with science specialist and Polynesian Voyaging Society crew member, Anushka Fauci. Anushka sailed the worldwide voyage as crew on both the Hokulea and on her sister canoe, the Hiki Analia. Anushka's role is to share the cultural and scientific importance of Malama Honua, 
And while at sea, she worked to test water quality, observe plankton, and identify fish. We did it. <laughs> and you were crew in both the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. Yes. So Nikki and Alia from New Zealand to Tahiti two years ago, and then Hokule uh, this Christmas from Miami to Panama City. So we brought her back home to the Pacific, which was pretty amazing. I was on in the Caribbean, and the Caribbean is it's so shallow and so warm, and the color is different. And in the Pacific, but mostly from Auckland, I think some other places, maybe in French Polynesia, it's similar. But like one, one really cool thing is we saw all that floating sargassum, oh. which is, ends up in a sargassum sea, right? Which we all know about, like at least as a marine biologist, like the sargassum sea and sargassum, Limukala, we have it here. And it's really, it's everywhere. It's floating everywhere. So that was kind of cool. Somehow Hokulea makes you become, those voyaging canoes, even he and Alia become a little, if you're spiritual or not, you will become a little bit spiritual, like that rainbow this morning. It was right here over Magic Island. There, we don't have that many rainbows here right over Magic Island, right when the first canoe were supposed yeah. to start to come. And that happens throughout the voyage a lot. And I think the other thing I think what I learned is, especially when you're out in the ocean, you have not many distractions, right? You're just up on the water with your crew members and yourself and your thoughts. I think it helped me refocus my interests and what I want to do in life and what are the important parts in life. It's so easy to get distracted here with our cell phones and all that. So I think that was really helpful and it kind of sunk in over time. Not right when you get off the boat, you know, like right after. One thing I think everybody, it's, it's clear, no matter your background or your age, you are a crew member. There's no passengers, period. And so you're divided up into the watches. So on Hiki, I was on six to 10 crews and on Hukule, oh, I was on the two to six crew, which means every day from two to six, night or during the day, you're in charge of the canoe. And there's, on Hukulea, there was three of us, so, you know, you gotta steer and you gotta follow whatever the, where the navigator tells you where to go. So you, that steering is the main thing during your watches. And then off watch, you might have different roles depending whatever the captain assigned you, whatever Kuleana. So I was on both voyages, I was the science specialist, so I did those science, science outreach project that took care of those and then on Hukulea I was also quartermaster. So quartermaster basically makes sure you know what's where and you know how much is left. Food is kind of most important. Food and toilet paper are kind of the two, <laughs> you know, <laughs> important parts. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the science outreach? When we catch fish for food, one that everybody's excited about that. So we would keep the stomach and look what's inside. So to see what, what they ate. There's actually not that much data out there because most fishermen, for example, they throw out the guts because it will they can't contaminate the meat and they will get less quality meat to sell it. So that gets thrown overboard. So there's not much data from open ocean areas. And then we, we also did fin clips. So we just took a little piece of tissue from the dorsal fin um, and put in a little buffer solution for future DNA analysis. And then we were also looking for if there's marine debris, so any plastic in the stomachs. Um, and unfortunately to say, yeah, there's, there is. So we found um, in both Pacific and Atlantic some plastic stuck in the back of the gut. How prevalent was that? Well, on the Caribbean, we only got three fish and one of them had a little plastic wrapper in the back stuck. And you could tell like the stomach was so full and it had fish of like different state of digestion in it. So, you know, which made me suspicious. And so I looked in the back of the stomach where it goes kind of to the intestines. Uh -huh. And there was a little, just a little plastic wrapper. Just balled blocking. Up. Just blocking, yeah, right. So it's like basically blocking the stomach. And the other one was in the Pacific and I forgot how many, we got maybe five, six fish there. And one Mahi Mahi had a big, big plastic piece back stuck back there. Same thing, stomach was full. At different types of, you know, like some were recently eaten and some were more a long time ago, so they were kind of digested. So that was, I was like, hmm. I think it's easy we humans to think of always from our perspective, but more from the earth perspective, from the environment, from the animals, from the plants who live here. We are just guests as they are. So I hope um, people will take care more of 
the Earth, even if it's not beneficial to us directly, because we are living on it. So in general, it will, at the end of the day, it will be beneficial to us. Next, Polynesian Voyaging Society crew member Matt Kars is on board the Hokulea, telling us what surprised him most on the journey. Honestly, I think it's just a, the connection that around the world that people felt with the canoe. I mean, we're just the crew members. We're, we're here to help. She's the, she's the star. They just grab people, animals, even the wet, everything just gravitates towards Hokulea, Hikianalea, and the other va'a from the Ohana va'a, and it's just, it's, it's electric. I haven't been able to process it yet, and just, it's just an overwhelming sense of pride in my heart for, it's not just, um, you know, our Hawaiian, native Hawaiian people, but it's, I think, pride for Hawaii, the Pacific, everyone who lives in this realm, and um, to be able to kind of make this connection with how things were, but it's not just, it's not static in the past, it's, it's a living history and it's living culture. And so just seeing the people being excited to be a part of voyaging and understanding who they are and wanting to be a part of it, it's a blessing. So we, and we wouldn't have been here without, you know, our elders. When we're out there sailing, it was not just the seen, the elders who are seen, but those unseen. And that was really special. Next, we meet with Polynesian Voyaging Society Chief Operations Officer and crew member Heidi Kai Guth. Heidi's role on land is to arrange logistics for the worldwide voyage. Heidi tells us which legs of the voyage she was on board for. I got to voyage from uh, Tahiti throughout the Society Islands to the Cook Islands to American Samoa and then from Brazil to the Virgin Islands which is where I grew up so that was really neat to be able to sail home and then along the New England seaboard from Rhode Island up to Maine, and then just most recently from Rapa Nui to the Marquesas with a pit stop in Pitcairn and onto Tahiti. What surprised me most was how genuinely kind and helpful the maritime community is around the world. I think we all expected that people would be kind and generous, but not that they would be that gracious, that open-hearted, without knowing anything about us to begin with. Um, it, it's just been really heartwarming, especially the indigenous communities around the world. We had hoped to be able to connect with them, but the outcome was far greater and far more inspiring than we had expected. Part of Malama Honua is our, our promise to children, and so how do we continue that legacy? Well, we have a promise to Pai Aina, to all of Hawaii, to care for our nearshore and deep sea oceans and coastal environments, as well as our promise to children to make sure that the next generation carries forward the values of voyaging and island care that we all hold so dear. But we're not done. The voyage is never over. Um, we do like to say that you can do anything. There's nothing that is impossible unless you think it's impossible. And so we've come home, but we've come home to a place that's been working with Malama Honua and we're gonna learn what our communities at home have been doing while we've been away, share with them what we've learned, and then we're all going to move forward collectively together for a better Hawaii. So in a way, the journey's just beginning. The journey is just beginning and many generations are gonna be coming up with us. And we're so inspired by our younger generation of crew members who are setting great examples at home and at sea. Thank you to all of Hawaii for supporting us. It's been a really long and arduous journey for everyone, but we felt the wind behind us from Hawaii in our sails and on our decks. Your mana powered us around and brought us home, and we couldn't be happier than to be with you right now. Congratulations. <laughs> University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program. Helping coastal communities of Hawaii and the Pacific. Through research, education, and outreach. Serving the community, from elementary to graduate students. Hawaii Sea Grant.